<laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome. Oh, I don't have my green screen on. <laughs> <laughs> Streaming on a budget. I you can't seriously even afford a chroma key. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyways, you know what? Let's just. No, I'm just kidding. What's up, guys? Welcome to the stream scene. Uh, we are here to talk about streaming on a budget. Uh, I'm joined by my lovely co-host, the Hunter Wild. How's it going, Hunter? How you doing? Hi. Uh, this is my this is my first time out of the wasteland all week. I've been in nothing but Fallout 76 mode. Uh, I am I'm intensely excited. I, this is basically scripted every week now. I'm intensely excited about this show. Why? I, why, Hunter? Why? I think I think that this is one of the most important topics for. Um, early and starting streamers and it's one that i think never leaves you uh a lot of a lot of the the, the budgeting stuff how to minimize expenditures and maximize your 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 value and so on these are these are things that you should uh that you'll probably be thinking about all the way up until you know like ninja status where you where you can you know you have the money to to throw at any projects that you want everybody else has to worry about um worry about budgeting and there are so many things top to bottom that could be tweaked, things that you maybe never even think about, uh, which is why we have two uh, top tier quality experts. Oh, God. On the subject <laughs> I don't here. know about that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to introduce yourselves, Kate? We're in the discount section. Okay. Yeah, we got some we got the best streamers discount here. streamers. <laughs> oh, my God. Who do you want to go first? Kate. That's me. Uh, hi, everybody. <laughs> hi. My name's Kate. Uh, I stream at twitch.tv slash Kate, uh, and I'm a variety streamer with a really fun and inclusive audience. Uh, great community there, and uh, play a bunch of games. There you go. That's my intro. Awesome. With a, with a, <laughs> I, I, and now I'm, is, this is like 45 seconds ago that you were mentioning this. I'm really excited to get into that story about the, the budgety bits. I've got yeah, a great budget. <laughs> we'll, we'll wait on that one. I, I, you, she planted this like this seed in my mind before we kicked into the show, and now I'm like really hungry to hear this 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 story. Uh, but Mav, what 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 about you? What you got? Oh, I I'm old. My name is <laughs> the old show. <laughs> the old show. <laughs> I'm Mav. I stream here full time on Twitch. I stream a lot too much, but you know, that's just part of it. Um, I also have my own podcast, the Mav Show podcast. It's not creative. It's just self-titled. Um, and I'm basically just talk about, talk with other streamers and know everything about them. So when I saw the tweet about like budgets, I was like, <gasps> I know how to be frugal. So I'm excited. I'm so excited. I have We're been excited, watching guys. this podcast and I've been like rooting them on and the fact that it's been going on for so long and I'm finally on it. I'm like, I will do it. I will talk about being you made it. <laughs> oh, oh. Got there. Yeah. So before we, before we dip into it too, too deeply, I also want to, I think this is this particular subject too, is something that, um, that everybody out watching it right now probably has some strong and deep input on something because everybody who streamed has done some budget stuff somewhere everybody even the, the dude who started with a five thousand dollar rig at some point was like i gotta be frugal with my game selection or how i'm doing my lighting or or something i um, think you should be frugal stuff. now i think even if you've made it you should absolutely. be absolutely 100 percent. absolutely absolutely so why don't we start with talking a little bit about our experiences with streaming on a budget? Like, where did we start? You know, because like all of us here are full-time streamers and, you know, from the outside, like it probably looks like we've got everything together, but it hasn't always been that way. So um, let's go around and, and share a little bit about our own experiences. Everyone's go first. Uh, Just from the beginning, like early on. From when you were a child. Oh, I'm not the baby streamer. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us your origin story as a human. <laughs> so my mom and dad. No, um, okay, so I can actually talk about my my first ever stream, which was done on an, uh, a desktop iMac. Uh, that was a hand me down. Um, it was already seven, I think, seven years old when I got it, and I had a twenty dollar headset that I bought off Amazon like a, just the cheapest Logitech headset I could find. Um, and I used the mic on that and it 
took a team. I actually have a screen cap of this somewhere, but it took a team of like six of us on a Google Hangout call trying to figure out how to route the audio from my headset through my Mac to OBS because you need to install two at the time, two third-party programs in order <laughs> to wire on a Mac. Through. That's just Streaming its, own, is, that's its right. own stream. Like it's that hell. It's yeah, awful. that's true. That's its own subject. <laughs> but then, so right before the show, I planted the seed of my first ever mouse. Mm -hmm. We're so ready for this. the first game I ever played on stream, actually my stream anniversary is coming up. It'll be three years in January. Happy three years. Thank you. Very and my two year partner anniversary is coming up next month. Happy two uh, years. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but I played Borderlands 2 and uh, I use my USB Mac keyboard and or my uh, Bluetooth Mac keyboard and my Bluetooth magic mouse. And a magic mouse, if you don't know what that is, it is the super slick looking white mouse that you get with your uh, oh, the Mac oh. iPad. Uh, but it's one, it's right click, left click, but it's one button. One button. So I could either aim or fire, <laughs> <but not> both. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't figure out the audio thing until like a week into my stream. So I had to decide if I wanted the stream to hear the audio from the game or if I wanted to hear the audio from the oh, game. Oh, God. So I gave it to the stream. So I had no <laughs> idea what was going on in this game. <laughs> wow. Somehow, here we are three years later uh, and people actually stuck around. But like that was my first months of streaming i streamed off that for seven months what oh. and the how, how, how did you find games to play on the mac like uh you you will when you need to be frugal you find a way you find a way <laughs> um but like i didn't have a console that i could play off of i had nothing so it was just whatever was available for the mac and i couldn't afford a pc i was working a pretty low grade bartending position for four years. I was in debt. I had no savings. The only reason I was able to upgrade, I owe a lot of my career to this person, but there was a moderator in my community who said, love your content, quality's crap. Um, I would like to like build a PC for you <laughs> because you need it. And I know that you can't afford it on your own. So that was just that generosity was the only way that I was able to keep going. But I made it work for myself for like seven solid months and built a community with that. So it's it's definitely possible. And this is part of like the, I know that we're supposed to be doing our sort of introductory stuff, but this is sort of the core cycle that you're in, right? When it comes to, to budgeting is like, if you're starting out streaming and you can't get the quality to the point that people want to watch and stick around, then you're not going to be able to earn the money from streaming in order to feed it back in and grow the, the, the quality, the production quality and, and get extensions and out from, from games and stuff. So finding, I get that, that sounds like a really fantastically lucky break. Um, yeah. I like, I literally owe so much of <laughs> my, like I said, my career to this person who and I understand this is not something that happens to everybody or most people, but like the fact that this very kind human who's still in my community today, he's one of my mods now, reached out and was like, you need help. And like, yeah. I'm in a position to offer you that help. And if you're cool with it, like I would talk to you about specifications that you need and like what you need to, and it wasn't like an extravagant rig and I still have it, but it was enough. You too? Yeah, it's not the one I'm using right now. I built a new one once I was able to, but it it's is- cool. It's in a, it's in this cupboard back here. It's a really baby PC, but it was just enough to get it working. And so I think that's going. also probably another pivotal thing is like the, the very, the quote that you had there was, uh, love your content quality is crap. Um, no matter what your budget or issues with production quality, you still have one thing that you can control, uh, significantly th through and through, which is how you, who you are, how you engage with whatever setup you have, $10 billion setup, $3 setup, you know, like junkyard, jerry-rigged, taped together things or, oh, or whatever, yeah. prioritizing <laughs> that internal stuff. 
I didn't even use a webcam. I used the webcam that was built into the iMac. Oh, that's that's really like, unfortunate. I couldn't afford a webcam. Oh, that's that's <laughs> wow. yeah. But then you like you slowly build up over time. So I think that first Christmas, I was like, I really want a webcam for Christmas, and here's the yes, yes! I can find. yes. And I think I got like a webcam, and then for my birthday, I asked for like a blue Yeti, and I like offered to go in havers on the gift with my parents. So I was like, I know it's kind of pricey, especially in Canada, but I was like, I've saved money, and like, can we do it together? My parents were like, Yeah, of course we can. So like, you gotta save. You gotta build it up. Mav, what about you? What's your uh, story with being on a budget? My story is pretty similar, but a little bit different. Um, so I, oh my God, I worked many jobs um, and I just graduated college and I'm a mom of two. <laughs> so I was being a single parent. So I, I had to be extremely frugal, right? So things that I, I got my first light which was literally like this little itty bitty lamb from a garage sale for like a dollar. And that's what I, that is literally what I would take the lampshade off and that's what I would use. Um, oh my God. Wow. Um, and then what, I had a steel series headset because it was on sale. It was like the, in the, like the kind of doesn't work refurbished section. Yeah. So then I had the steel series headset in this dusty Walmart all-in-one PC. And then the cord of my still series, I have clips of this, literally would be right here because it would be plugged in. And it was super short back in the day. <laughs> this is a tot. <laughs> so it was like, you can't move at all. This stream. You're on um, a leash to your PC. Oh my God. And I used to stream on this like wooden chair that was like duct taped because I had fallen through it. So I like duct taped its own like support. And then I was in a closet. So I streamed in an empty closet. Um, and that was like my first memories of like streaming. And what got me into that was because I had been streaming World of Warcraft and I have been streaming like our big RP PVP events on a different account, like on a different Twitch name. Um, and then I was like, this is cool. But it was like a laggy, like, uh, <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> Um, and then I did an extra live, um, 24 hour charity stream with a role playing group for Elder Scrolls online. Um, and then I fell in love with chat. Like I fell in love with like interacting, even though I was dying. I had like, I was, I was exhausted. We didn't make it, but, um, we didn't make it, but that's Come what I was dreaming. And then I like saved all my money to get, I remember getting the C920 because I had the, oh my God. Yeah. I don't remember what it was the the one before it and it was so blurry. Um, but then, yeah, like then my community was like, 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 what do you want? Like, what do you want now? And I was just like, what are you talking about? They're like, I was like, well, eventually I want a green screen. And then someone like donated 20 bucks and I had like five people in my chat room and I was like, Oh my God, we're getting a green screen. <laughs> and yes! I, I tacked it into the ceiling. <laughs> I, tacked, I nailed it and I tacked it into the ceiling to drape behind me in my closet. Yeah, I think like uh, the green screen, like I use the Elgato one, but that's like totally a luxury buy. You don't need to spend yeah. 150 bucks yeah, on a green absolutely. screen. absolutely. Like, literally, it's so easy to put together a green screen. Like I've seen people paint their rooms. I've seen people use construction paper, cloth, like poster board from the top. Like yeah. Wall, make wall greens. Let me share yeah, my I mean, green screen with you real quick. Uh, Cause I built mine um, myself and I wonder if you can. Yeah. Oh <laughs> so yeah. I, wall or I ceiling mounted mine and uh, uh, attachment <laughs> from roller blinds that I got free from a friend who worked in a blind See, there store. There we go. And I took a, sh a green sheet that I bought on Amazon and I cut it and I sewed it and I duct taped it to the thing. And then it like has a little cord that I can do this and it like retracts and stuff. And the thing only cost me like 20 bucks. Yeah. So the thing a recurring theme here with a lot of this is see, like you're telling that story and I know that somebody is out there going like, yeah, but I don't have a friend who works at a blind store. The point is that you can get super creative with the solutions. Look at what you do have available 
So like for me with the green screen, my first green screen is still my favorite green screen. I love the Elgato green screen, uh, but it's still on the floor. Like I can trip over it. Sometimes I'm backing up in my chair and I hit it. It's, it's minor inconvenience. It's like, I have no real complaints. My first green screen cost me, I think, $23 in total in materials. It was a green sheet. That was the most expensive part because I bought the green sheet, the green sheet full price. Yep. Uh, oh, everything God. else was coming out around the house. I get hives if I have to buy things full price. Um, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> so it was a curtain rod. I had a curtain rod that was, it was sitting around because I'm really bad at putting up curtains. So the curtains are just sitting out over there. Curtain rod. Uh, the shower curtain rings, you know, that you mm -hmm. put the to slide back and forth. Okay. Twine and screws. Screw yeah. the screws into the ceiling, twine to the uh, to the to the bar. And I took the green screen, I put tape along the back end, punched holes in it, curtain rods, the, cur the, cur the, the shower curtain rings all one side. I would swing it across if I wanted an open room, because this is my painting studio, as I was a painter before I started streaming. I'd swing it across. I had a little loop that I could, uh, that I could add two more uh, screws in the wall with uh, some more twine. I'd loop it on, I'd attach it, it would just stick to the wall. It was like nearly invisible. It's just like a little thing there. You couldn't see it much on the ceiling. You couldn't see much on the wall. That was like $23 in materials. Super easy, just stuff sitting around. You can get creative with stuff like this. I mean, and it's fun too. Thing, and it's still my favorite green screen. I wish I still had that. Another thing with like the green screen is you don't need a green screen Absolutely. to have a good stream at all. Like, like at all. I don't use I, I would say yeah yeah exactly. like if you just come clean your house and have a decent background like <laughs> have a cool background like it doesn't cost you anything um I, I find that like I'd like to do a poll yep. on this one day but like I think it's about 50 50 whether people prefer green screens or not so yeah it's I not even it a thing that you really need. depends on like the caster really I think sure. it's just the flavor of cast just like sometimes if there's like something really intense on stream I'll just not use it or use a green screen and if I don't care then I won't or like if I have my dogs out they'll just hang out here and I think there's something interesting about the games too like bizarrely there are some games that are far better if you don't have a green screen because like you have to position yourself strangely on the screen if my like disembodied person like a lot of UIs along the bottom yeah exactly like, if I just have to like sit somewhere weird like it just it looks strange but if you don't have a green screen people are like oh it's a camera just it's fits with what your, your expectations are. It works really yeah. well. I also found that for me, having a green screen meant that I had to have a lot of lights because I could yes. never get it quite right. And so yeah. now what it's I do- investment. Exactly. Um, I have, I think like the cheapest ring light you can get on Amazon. Again, I asked for it uh, for a birthday present uh, last year. And so it's just like a newer ring light. It's great. I have some light strips back here, but this is the only thing that I need. And this is the only thing that lights me. It lights me evenly. I used to have like a cheap lighting kit over here to do fill lights. And it was just really stressful for me because if the green screen didn't look quite right, I was like, oh, I have to fix it midstream. But this yeah. way, I think it just like adds more personality. And it's it. more money on your light bill, right? Exactly. Your electricity bill. You're, you're, having to, you're having to buy, if you don't have to buy stands. You can still go with budget setups with your lighting and stuff. But you're, there are many more things that get added into the bill for how much it costs you to stream if you decide to go with a green screen. That, that is definitely a way to. But I think you also have to do some other stuff that's totally cheap and free. Uh, which is like clean your freaking room. Like yeah, that's a God. big one. Like for me, I'd rather have a green screen. Like I'm going to put a green screen up rather than have to actually be cleanly. Uh, but you might so, so clean your <laughs> If you're streaming in your bedroom, make your bed. Make your like, bed. If you need to hide stuff, just like at least push it off screen. It will make Absolutely. you so much more professional. Yep. And like, oh God, there's so many times I've gone into people's streams and they've been great but i just it, the mess is so distracting from the yeah. great content they're producing and it's great. absolutely it two seconds just tidy it makes it feel like the stream is dirty you're you're, you're showing people something that they don't want nobody likes to see the mess like no. i ignore my own mess because i have to because it's a survival mechanic for me it's like oh i'm messy okay i'm just gonna keep going and not look at that sock <laughs> in the hallway or whatever there's a story about that but <laughs> I lost my train of thought with the sock. Yeah, so, but the, yeah, you want to you want to present the best possible version of yourself that you can, and and this is that's easily one of the ways that you can do it for on the on the cheap. And somebody well, it's also asked, like on the tool, yeah, 
it's just like a tool for your stream, right? Like, yeah. do you want to spend a lot on your setup or do you want to spend a lot creating content? Like, what do you want to do? Yeah. So have you guys had any experience with streaming directly from a console? Yes. No. How was that? Um, so back when I first started streaming, um, uh, when you streamed on the console, you got front page. Uh, so that was sort of like the workaround for my friends. I know some of my friends who are sort of big, big streamers now, they got their good push because they were like on top of the directories and like on top of all that sort of thing. So that's sort of why. But um, when I would stream on the console, uh, it was because I either was moving something or I broke my computer or something. And um, it really makes you like appreciate a computer <laughs> 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 or like traveling because there wasn't like, there wasn't an app for Twitch that was like, you can stream on this. Like there wasn't any of that. There's nothing. Um, and yeah, like you would have to really try to work with the lighting just because like the ps camera the playstation yeah. camera was like very like green screeny like the playstation i it's or very something. like yeah it was it was super great I mean, if you if didn't you have a ton to of light it, you can totally do it like yeah. there is there is a huge streamer uh streamers that do it now um but, but yeah i think a couple of things on this subject one you can buy a used console that performs just as well as a brand new one. PCs, it's an entirely different beast, right? Yeah. Like if you're trying to buy like a used PC, like what are you getting? Like grandma's old used Dell? Like, you know, that's going to be very challenging. You're not as quite as readily, it's not quite as readily available. Uh, and they're still going to be more expensive. You can buy a used PC. You can mm -hmm. buy used games and stuff. Um, streaming oh, directly God. for, I'm mean, sorry, you can buy a used console and buy used games in, in such in a way that, that I don't you can't yeah, but PC I, games. you should talk, like if you cannot buy a pc and that is what's holding you back you can stream on the console and it Definitely. might not be perfect but you're gonna start somewhere and you need to start somewhere and it's gotten a lot better i mean with microsoft buying mixer like you're yep. seeing a lot more support for that on the xbox so, absolutely um mm -hmm. you know I, I think the features available directly on console have improved a lot yeah um there are definitely still some drawbacks, but I think also there's more tools that will integrate with your console to give you like alerts and stuff. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I think uh, yeah. like Lightstream or some uh, like something allows you to get alerts. And Aren't I we, think like if you use Mixer, the Mixer app, I I'm think pretty sure they Mixer have that allows you to do that now. Yeah, Mixer yeah. probably yeah. If you're going through, they, if you're thinking of like Expo. yeah. That's pretty. That's a pretty good platform for. Probably not the case with a PS4. <laughs> I only just got my PS4, like my first real I've own, console. Oh, yeah. Months ago. Like maybe yeah. six months ago, I had a Switch that I bought last year, but only started streaming on it this year. Actually, Actually. I sh I streamed on my Xbox this year. <laughs> Did you <laughs> really? I had it's so fresh. I, yeah, it was so fresh. Um, I actually played the new Call of Duty Zombies on it. <laughs> that was not that long ago. But it was actually very clear. It was very clear. Um, the audio was, was fine. I just literally used the old Xbox earpiece with a mic. And it was pretty clear. And it was awesome, actually, if I do remember. I have the, the, his, the highlight of it. Um, <laughs> It was so pretty to, awesome. To allay a few concerns probably from people, you guys know people who started streaming with a uh, console and got partnered, right? Right. Yeah. I think I think everybody everybody in here knows knows people who did that. My the person who comes to mind first and foremost for me is Icy Rain. Uh, she was the first person that I had I had heard of who went who started streaming from a PlayStation and and got partnered without ever having moved to a PC. That's start like, start to finish. Who, do you know who Real Crafty is? Yeah. And do you know who Fifty Five is? Yeah. So is this this was from this was from Destiny stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. At Destiny, and she played a lot of Elder Scrolls Online on the console when it came out, and then Crafty used to do carries on console, but stream on console. Like they just never had a PC. They would have like a little laptop to read chat and have their alerts pop up there. Same and thing with your phone. Yeah. Phone or tablet. Yeah. yeah. It's a great piece yeah. of technology. Also, it might not be what you want, but does it work? It works. 
quick PSA for see, people who want to buy a PlayStation 4, at least in Canada right now. There's a deal on a uh, one terabyte, uh, I think, Spider Man PS4. <gasps> and it's like yeah. $200 right now. Hey, Kate, can you pick me one of those up? I'll, uh, <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> uh, but just as a heads up, like, as far as a PlayStation goes, mine costs five hundred dollars. Uh, but like, if you, Black I know it's- Friday's coming and cyber deals are coming. Also, that's that. what I was gonna say. Everything. It's like this is perfect timing for this <laughs> episode. Like, like take some Black notes. Friday. Like, favorite time of the year. <laughs> but, oh, it's apparently it's two hundred dollars in the U.S. as well. Uh, so there you go, Hunter. You can go do it yourself. But um, <laughs> so like it's yeah, hundred dollars off <laughs> or something that could. Uh, could help you out with that kind of stuff. Yeah, and it'll have the fresh warranty on it too, which exactly. is another, another important well, point for buying yeah. used used consoles. Uh, that you know, get, get you get something refurbished from like GameStop or whatever that has a uh, its own fresh warranty on it. Well, we yeah. were also talking about um the subscription based games on the console. yes, like Let's you could go. literally stream on a budget, streaming on the console, and you get games on the cheap. Like I don't know how easy. Like that's. That's pretty incredible to be able to create content and not have a, like a, any roadblocks or anything. Sure, it's not going to be like what you enjoy watching personally. Like you like enjoying watching Hunter when he's very high production. Um, but it wasn't always like that. So <laughs> hey, you have to, you have to <laughs> learn how to talk to people in the beginning. That's absolutely I forget, true. I honestly like, forget, but and that's a that that's a I I want to I definitely want to focus on the the subscription services right now, but. As a key point to that one that I absolutely want to refresh over and over again, if you have a billion dollar setup that's like the greatest thing in the world and you don't know how to be a fantastic streamer, it doesn't change anything. Nobody wants to watch you. If For you sure. have, you know, if you can stream in 4K, which you, you can't on any platforms yet, but even if you could, you stream in 4K and you just have the absolute like brilliant, you know, the most wonderful stuff. Uh, if you if you if you can't either if you can't perform at the absolute highest level. Of, of gameplay like on a professional level or this is almost everybody you can't connect with people you can't continue narrating your experience or your inner world or whatever it happens to be you, you can't do all of those things um that's where that you definitely suffer that's another thing that you can control for zero dollars so exactly like it, just like just do it like yeah. right like you don't have to have a super expensive perfect setup to start streaming like just see if you like it like you may not like it you may like don't decide it's not for you if you don't like it yet you have to find yeah. out yeah give it a try give it a real try <laughs> do what yeah. you like what you can with your budget and your setup and before you make any actual investments like get a feel for you know how absolutely it is. yeah okay so subscription services we've got oh, uh so good. There's so many. There's so, I was talking about Xbox the, Origin yeah. place. The, the Origin one is interesting. You get like somebody said like 312 games or something that you can. You could actually buy the old, um, well, they're not even that old, the Batman games for like five bucks with PS Plus. Yeah. Oh, PS so like you get discounts. Good. You get discounts. Humble Bundle has like great deals on games, games too. Yeah. There's a couple of free games that you get each month that you can play through and. Yeah, so how do a lot of these subscription services work in your experience and like and where's the value for people who want a budget? Um, so I was a really big MMO girl. So I in the beginning, like I would do some playthroughs, but I was just I could not afford it. And so I would stick to like MMOs and like big massive worlds with like gradual story and things like that, that and unending involved. content so you pay, the, pay the money there and you just get three thousand hours yeah, i just can keep playing and then yeah. I, that's how i cultivated my community and my um my yeah the community and just grew that directory um but like now obviously i'm very thankful to be able to get keys yeah, yeah. people yeah, yeah. throw keys at you but more than yeah. i want yeah yeah like Same. please don't give me more keys um <laughs> But before, like, you really would have to pick and choose. And now, mm -hmm. like, there are so many more options. So when you see even, like, bigger streamers and even, like, our size, like, and we're like, oh, my God, that's incredible. Like, they just announced the subscriptions to play games. And people are like, well, why do you care? You're a streamer. Like, oh, but you don't understand. Like, there are a lot of people that should play these games. And now they're going to be able to. And yeah. that's, like, the the best feeling. And if you're if a... You're, uh, hungry busy little streamer body and you were 
you're pumping through games and you're just having a blast, like it's going to be a good thing for you. It's That's good. where the hazard is. I like uh, Xbox Games Pass because you can, if you do have a PC, you can play all that stuff on your PC. Yeah. So that's where a lot of the... Because they have the, the Xbox app on Interesting. PC. Yeah, so they have the Xbox app for your PC. So that's how... Because the Play I, Anywhere stuff that they yeah. that they introduce. So they you can do a two-week free trial to see if the games are your kind of games. Cool. Uh, and then I think it's like 10 bucks a month or something, but you have access to all of these games that you get to download and play it's like just a whole library it's like netflix for games yeah. um the other thing is hum <laughs> humble bundle mm -hmm. i think is great um humble bundle always has sales they have discounts you're supporting charity which is awesome but how about monthlies 12 bucks the monthlies are insane yeah. like overwatch was in it recently they're really good games usually. destiny like, was in it like yeah there and are like cool more, you, get, in it. you get giveaways with it too right because you're gonna have a few games that you're not gonna stream that you're not gonna play yeah. you get a few games out of it that you are Give away the extra ones. You're paying 12 bucks a month for the Humble Monthly. Get 10% discount on their entire store and extra giveaways along the way. Exactly. And I mean, even if you just want, um, their bundles are great. Their monthly is great. Um, you, There's so much you can pick up for so cheap because it's also pay oh. what you want for a lot of that stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? Like a cool added feature there too. Something I've been thinking because I've been pushing my own uh, Humble Link a lot more lately Same. is... Yeah, so you you as a streamer, you can uh, sign up to their affiliate program, right? Yeah. Or partner program. I don't know what they call it. Um, so they have yeah. a partner program, but there's also yeah. like an affiliate thing. And the community lead, her name is Whitney. She's incredible. Yeah. She's great. Catastrophic. She's cool. Whibney. She's cool. Yeah. Whibney. So, so if you wanted to subscribe to Humble Monthly, went through their affiliate slash partner program where you had your own link, you can play the games that are coming out on Humble Monthly, pitch your own link on your own stream, try to get some other people who are watching to, to, to buy through Humble Bundle. And it's fantastic. It's a not-for-profit that's going to save you some, some money if you subscribe to this stuff and whatever. Yeah. Doing all that, you're saving money to play the games. You're playing the games that people can get, and then you're pitching your own thing on stream in the first place in order to hopefully generate some revenue. You could, well, you could also get your community in on the games that you like on Absolutely. a budget because not everybody can purchase outright everything. So yeah. it, it, it helps you out too. And also- This is like a good system. Humble yeah. tends to, I don't, I'm assuming they do this for everybody, but Humble will send me game keys just mm -hmm. on a kind of weekly or bi-weekly basis to be like, hey, you've, you know, you've been a partner with us. Here's a key for a free whatever. And so I've had a couple like free humble monthlies come my way and I've been like, oh, this is great. I'll use it or give it away or download the games and give them away to people, whatever. But yeah, humble is great. Just aside from all of this, humble is a great service and you should definitely use it. Um, also, um, if you guys have heard of honey. Yeah. Honey is cool too. Done. Oh my God. What? It is free. It's free saving money. You don't have to buy anything. You don't have to do anything. You just have to download it to your Google Chrome and a browser extension yeah it literally will it's a big huge basically brain of discount codes that people submit that that has worked so instead of having to like oh i have to go find this discount code or google it there's a oh code, i see what you're saying so you go to like amazon and you and they obviously do it for you but if you go to like best buy so and when a company has a promo code, when a, when a, yeah, then it, it basically goes into their oh, that's system. Awesome. And when you're just shopping, it'll pop up and be like, there's a promo code. Would you like to use it? And then it'll save you money on every purchase that you make. Yeah. That's interesting. That's awesome. so amazing. I'm not another sponsored, thing with like... but I should be. <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing with game keys that we kind of mentioned, but I definitely want to talk more in depth about is requesting codes uh, from PR companies and websites. Like you don't have to be a big streamer to get codes. Yeah. yeah maybe absolutely. you won't qualify for some codes, but it's definitely worth trying. Uh, there's key mailer and evolve or two that come to mind where you sign up to the website, you verify your information, uh, and then you can request codes. You only request codes that, you know, you're going to stream and then you submit coverage for, uh, the key that you got. But I mean, were those two? there's really good games on there. Uh, key mailer dot co, I believe is the link. And then evolve terminals is the other one. Uh, if a mod can find those links. Oh, and Ranger move it. Says, move it, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So those uh, yeah, and they have good games on there. Like they have a lot, a lot of good games. So it's definitely worth starting there. Uh, planning like it's important to plan ahead what you're gonna be streaming. You don't want to do it like the day of, and you're not gonna probably get a response. But uh, yeah, oh, indie boost. That's another one too. But also, you need to make sure that when you are requesting codes. There is a there's an etiquette to go by. Don't be a grabby. Decorum. Yeah, don't be grabby. Don't be entitled. The person working PR doesn't need to give you a key. Try to give them a reason for them to give you. Yes. A key. Like I have a super engaged community. We love these kind of indie games. It really goes along with the theme of my channel. Here's what I can provide to you. Would you be able to provide a key to me? And then follow up and actually stream the content. Don't just go grabbing for keys because you can. Yes, that's that's a quick way to get blacklisted. This is how it went. Yeah, and you actually follow up because yeah. if you do follow up and you're on good terms with that PR person, they're more likely to give you keys again and be like, wow, "Absolutely, this did a great job with us. Here's more free keys. Please keep covering and our." Content. Just like with everything, that person's probably not always going to work at that company. They may move up a ladder somewhere and be somewhere else next year. And if you've already got a good relationship with them and you weren't burning bridges and being a doo doo head, good to go. <laughs> What's more, the follow up thing. Actually, try and show them uh, a little bit of the content that you that you did. Did you, did you put it up on YouTube? Did you get some clips? Did somebody give you give you? Are, is there a way that you can create a highlight reel for it? Uh, I'm doing a lot of hand actions. I can see myself out of the corner of the eye. There's a lot of this. <laughs> it's my little hand dance. Oh, hi, kitty. <laughs> she was uh, knocking at my door. I'm sorry. Had to had to had to get it. Yeah, I definitely know how that goes. My mind gets right up here. Um, yeah, show them show them the content that you created and and why it was why it was valuable. Right, because you're gonna pitch yourself initially and be like, "Here's how I'm going to be valuable," and then after you after you play the game, show them why you were valuable. Right? They'll want to give you more stuff if there's DLC for the game later. Uh, if they come out with another title next year, which is maybe even a bigger hit, so on and so forth, or if they move along um, to another company, it's really exactly. good stuff. I had a friend who worked at Adult Swim Games for a while, and he was great there. And he left his position and now he works at Bethesda. And and now I'm Perf. like, great, now I have a contact at Bethesda. Perf. Wonderful. <laughs> um, but because I built such a nice relationship with him at his first job, he was like, you know, if you need anything for Fallout, let me know. Happy to help. I think yeah. Yeah. I think with like even like if you really are thinking about streaming, you like the first thing that you should think about is just being a good person. Yeah. Like I know that sounds way easier than it is, but it there is are, free. There are, yeah, but there are <laughs> a lot of assholes that just might get under your skin. And you really gotta just just be cool and just realize that everyone is doing their own thing and as everyone's going a million different directions, especially now with like yeah. the industry just being just a million miles a second now. Yeah. Like, you just gotta like ping them again and just be like hey i know like i haven't heard anything um i'm really really excited about this i'm just wanting to like post and say hi again. yeah and Even on, if, on that note you don't have to harass to remind yeah i'm usually thankful people are like hey and i'm That's like ah! I keep telling people i'm like yes Thank please you. remind me They're like i don't want to be annoying i'm like i want you to be annoying I annoy it. me like, until yeah. i do it i want to do the thing <laughs> but i forget the word gentle reminder have, go a long yeah. way yeah, but if you, absolutely. But if you haven't heard anything in a while, then it's 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 a good bet to like not keep pushing. Sure, but sure, sure. you can also revisit if another game comes up. You never know when something will bite. So just don't just yeah. be persistent, but be respectful and just be a good person. <laughs> and if you if you if you built that relationship and you did the thing where you followed up too, uh, that's building the relationship. Not just I emailed them that one time in October last year. Right. It's like you you had a little bit of a conversation um, and, and came back and showed them your content. Well, they, they also love it. They love when you talk to them about yeah, exactly things. like like with like Twitch staff, for example, people are always wanting stuff from them. And I'm just like, no, but how are you like you? Yeah, been, exactly. Like what? <laughs> like, is there anything I can help you with? Do you need me to showcase anything? So that means I'm doing karaoke one of these days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like play Twitch things. I'm like, oh, God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but also just if you oh, yeah. do happen to go to a convention mm -hmm. and you go to these booths, like the Indie Mega Booth at PAX is generally a great place to meet developers and start that relationship with them. Sure. 
they are there showcasing their game. They want people to play their indie game. This is an exciting thing for them. And if you let them know like, hey, I'm a streamer, this catches my eye, it looks really cool. Even if you just follow each other on Twitter and you start that relationship that way, then you have the beginnings of a rapport with them, which can grow and evolve over time. And to reiterate, these are the many ways that you can save yourself a significant amount of money over a longer career. Dude, we streaming. spend hundreds of years. dollars in games yeah. every year. Like th- probably thousands of dollars in games every year. Absolutely. Being a variety streamer. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a, a huge thing. Um, I do want to get into a Q and a here in just a few minutes, but before we do that, I want to touch quickly on a couple of other things. Camera webcam. Yes. What do you guys recommend? Logitech C920. Is that? Yeah. If you're going to go with a camera, you got to get a C920. It goes on every three months on Amazon. Just have okay lighting and it looks awesome. Yep. Yeah. Play around with the settings. That's the thing. Like the lighting could be like Mav said, she had a tiny garage sale lamp. I used my overhead light in the nook I was streaming in or natural light. Natural light's free. Like if you can set yourself up in front of a window, it's going to look great. Changing your schedule is free too, unless you have a schedule that's restricted by your job. Exactly. Um, Yeah. Logitech C920, it's like 50 bucks. It's always on sale. I still use it. I think most streamers still use it, like unless they go to a really high quality cam, but it's, I mean, I think anything less is kind of like, eh, but I mean, C920 is I wouldn't bother with anything less. I also wouldn't bother with anything more. Yeah. As long as you sound awesome. Honestly. Sound is because you again. Somebody asked this a lot, uh, uh, way earlier. Uh, do you need a camera to stream? You definitely don't. Some of my favorite streamers don't use a camera at all, um, so you don't even necessarily have to invest in that. Unless for me, uh, I'm very emotive with my visage. Very expressive. I feel I, that. I, yeah, it's the my Italian <laughs> nature. Like I've got hands going all the time. Right. Yeah. I can do a, a minute of silence. I did this yesterday with all this stuff going on here, like disappointment and like exciting. It's like all these things. For me, it's very important. Um, I wouldn't want to, to go without it. But for a lot of people, it's completely unnecessary. And it can be trained. You can train yourself how to stream without a camera with ease. Um, if you're just starting out, whichever one you pick is the one you're going to train yourself for. So if you, if, you go, if you decide to go without a camera, you should be good to go. Yeah. You'll be fine. Uh, oh, my God. So audio. Audio. Uh, so there's a lot to say on audio. So starting with, like, the mic except. The mic itself, um, I think that the cheapest quality buy is a blue snowball is a decent cheap mm-hmm. 50, 60 bucks. You're going to get some decent audio with it. Uh, or if you have a little bit more like a blue Yeti uh, oh, or Razor headset. Siren. Honestly, like even they're the surprisingly series, good now. The mic, like their mic technology is incredible and it's cheap and you have a good way better than it used to be all in one and it's awesome when i started um, streaming like there's no way i wanted to use the headset mic because it was I, very poor <laughs> i have a few now they're great when i started i did start with my like a really cheap logitech 20 dollar headset Same. mic and it was i don't even know this how you can tell what i was saying gig. <laughs> <laughs> but that is true but uh, you, headset mics have gotten a lot better part of yeah but you, then you like play off of that like that's exactly kind of streaming you got to play with what you got and you that's gotta, another budget thing too just, yeah and you just have to you just have to basically just like charm your way into people's hearts. Hundred percent. Terrible quality. Just play stuff. like you know what you're doing, and with whatever <laughs> I, it is that you have. Yeah. All I did. All you joke about it. Whatever. The headset. So yeah. So I, um, my starter mic was uh, a Sam a Samson, not to be confused with Samsung, a Samson like uh, ugh, but got his haircut and then he's like ugh. Uh, <laughs> meteor. Two, I think. Uh, I still my favorite microphone setup so far. I've got. I now have like a seven hundred dollars setup, a nine hundred dollars setup. Do not like it nearly as much as the sixty dollars mic that I had when I started while using um, Adobe Audition, which is a paid program that you don't have to have. You can use Reaper, right? Logo. There's a, a couple of articles, I think. Yes, I want to talk about audio software because yeah, the software. Uh, right. You don't need. Uh, an XLR mic with if you get an XLR mic, you know you gotta get a sound card, condenser, Just to mixer, whatever. I have all that and I don't things. like it as much. Like there are, uh, there's a lot of free tools with audio that will touch up your mic nicely. Like so, I use uh, Voice Meter Banana. Yeah. Uh, with some, they have there's so VLC plugins which actually OBS now supports directly, which is super nice. It's cool. Uh, 
which you can so you can do like a virtual compressor, uh, you know, noise gates, stuff like that. Clean up your audio in the background. Um, uh, we'll gather up the links to those guides. Uh, Reaper is another one. Um, mm-hmm. Though I do think it actually does cost money, at least eventually, or maybe there's a free version or something. Yeah, I think you can get like I an think. upgrade. Yeah. Um, so those are really, really nice free audio tools that like you don't need to get all this stuff. Like you can start with the USB mic and just yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, clean you up your audio software? with these three things. No, I the thing you're talking about all of this, and I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I used uh, a <laughs> headset mic and then I went to <laughs> yeah. USB uh, Yeti. Blue Yeti. Yeah. Uh-huh. And now I have a Audio Technica 2020. Um, but throughout with all like a of physical that, mixer? Uh, I have like a little preamp sort of thing that I don't okay. touch. I turn it on. Yeah, and set it. and forget it. Don't yep. touch it after that. That's me too. I somehow got it to work and I'm never touching it again. But the only thing that I use is my in-stream uh, like settings in OBS. I use a noise gate, a compressor, and a cool. noise suppression. I used default settings that I found on some dude's YouTube video. Yeah. And between a couple hours of trial and error, I got it sounding, I think, pretty heckin' good. Uh, but it was free. I watched tutorials on YouTube and then put it into my program. OBS is great with that now. I've, 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 I don't do anything with it because I'm just such an audio idiot. I've, and the thing with me starting with the with my USB mic and and using uh, Adobe Audition, I literally downloaded some other dude's recommended settings and just put those in. And I was like, that sounds <laughs> oh, good. Let's yep. go. That's what I did. And it was good. And you can do it with a lot of stuff. But OBS has come a long way with, with that stuff. Cause I like back in the olden days of like 17, 12, when I started streaming four years ago, it, it's just as, as little as four years ago. Like you couldn't do a lot of that stuff and nearly as easily as you can now. Yeah. I, did. yeah. I, in. I searched like my mic. Uh, it was like Audio Technica 2020 mic settings OBS. And there were hundreds of videos. And I found. <laughs> yeah. I found one that looked simple enough, and then I just opened OBS and went boop, boop, boop. Okay, cool. It sounds, it sounds great, and I haven't touched it since. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Another interesting uh, piece of software is uh, for, I guess, not technically audio, but for capture, actually, is NDI. Yeah. Uh, NDI is a completely free solution that will allow you to capture uh if you're on a two pc setup or capturing from uh another video source basically for free instead of buying like a capture card which can be pretty expensive uh if you're buying like a you know an internal card or something uh yeah. capture cards are pretty pretty pricey so um ndi is a, is very uh it's very interesting it's very hard to explain there's a guide that west linked you can check it out for more information uh we won't go into it too much but it's very interesting if you're trying to save some money and uh stream having like a really fancy setup like it's what production companies use to put together like land events and stuff so ndi and rtmp but rtmp i think is more complex i'm i'm too dumb to understand either uh (laughs) read the article it will do all of the work for you with that one yeah so we'll take some questions for q a if you guys have any feel free to throw them in chat i will gather them and we'll do our best to answer all of them in the next 20 minutes uh, we do have a question from Kui who asks, what kind of desks do you guys use? What did you start with? And what about monitors? Something we haven't talked about yet. Oh, good I, question. I use, uh, an Ikea desktop. Same. It, it, yeah. It, I have a, my office is very long. So I have like a 10 foot desk with two like linamon, I think just white Ikea desktops strapped together. It's fine. <laughs> it's a desk. It's great. Um, the desk I started with was a second hand writing desk that I got at a thrift store, which yep. was about three feet across and it was tiny, but it fit my one iMac and that was great. Um, what was it? Monitors? Desks oh. and monitors? Yep. My monitors yep. are very expensive, uh, but I got them on a screaming deal. So I used two screaming. 28 inch <laughs> screaming deal. Uh, uh, two 28 yeah. inch Asus uh, 4K monitors. Hot diggity. Yeah, they were very expensive. Uh, and then the other one is my first ever second monitor that I bought, which I had to get like four dongles and a second cable. To yeah. A second for my iMac. Uh, uh-huh. But it's just like an HP 27 inch pavilion uh, and it's done vertically. Uh, so I. 
I think for the, I think for monitors, I mean, monitors are one of the things that you can absolutely buy secondhand. I do not uh, need either of these to be as like, yeah, yeah. as they are. <laughs> they you were absolutely buy monitors secondhand. Go. Big tip for that is universities. I don't remember what some of the terms are, but universities get rid of their tech. Uh, they will upgrade. They have a, a specific budget for this stuff. They will move some of their stuff out, regardless of how well it operates. It has to be functional for them to... Um, uh, to to auction or sell it, but they will have these regular auctions. I assume that this is pretty universal. I know that this is the case um, around the United States that uh, that they want to make some of that money back, so they simply sell a lot of their stuff, and it can be like in bulk and very inexpensive. Um, how far away your monitor is going to be from your face should determine how large it is. So if you can get it a little bit closer, you can totally go, you can totally downgrade that thing to a 23 inch or something. You don't have to get like a 44 inch monitor unless it's gonna be across the room. Uh, that's one of the things that I think you can use to, to, sort, of, uh, to sort of minimize the expenditures is, is lower the size, get it a little closer to your face. As for oh. desk, I, I started with a, a really poopy, uh, literally free Ikea thing I still have it right behind my green screen. It still works perfectly fine. It's just missing one of its little strips on the side. It's literally free, zero dollars. Yeah, check your like free listings or cheap listings on like- Craigslist. Absolutely. Craigslist, yeah. Whatever. For sure. Um, there's a ton of people who are in the process of moving or downsizing or just yep. switching it up who are like, you know what? Just get rid of it. I don't want it. It's cheap or it's free. Take it out of my life. <laughs> yeah, and I don't have to deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> also just about the monitor thing, totally offside, but I'm, I met a Fortnite person who only played Fortnite on a 44 inch monitor about this far from his face. Oh my God. I was like, how do you do that? How do you even like, see that dude on the other side? And he's like, well, I can just see eyeball. everything. It's just right in front of me. We like, gotta go oh, like this God. to see everything. Yeah, I know, exactly. exactly. <laughs> he wants it VR, but not yet. Not they said quite. it was more immersive. And to that, to that point, uh, if you're playing competitively, you need a high re refresh rate. Re I'm going to put W's in all my R's. We, we flesh weight. We flesh weight. So I, I have a high weight. refresh rate, AC. Yeah. Um, that's really where I put all my money into. Um, and other than that, I did just upgrade, but it's a BenQ and it's a 27 inch now, but it's just nice. the basic. It's nothing special. It was like a hundred dollars. Like it, you don't even need a monitor really for whatever you're playing games on. If you're doing a two monitor setup, um, just focus more on like your gaming one. If like, what is your plan to do? Do you like shooters? Do you not like shooters? Then you don't need a high refresh rate. Yep, exactly. If you, if you need to do all in one, then um, then you're gonna want to find something that can handle that. Um, but if you're doing two, like you don't you, like I had, had two 24 inches. I've had the three monitor setups. I've had two ginormous ones. I've had all sorts of setups, um, but my favorite is the two. One that's a bigger screen, and then one that is my 24-inch high refresh rate monitor. So that's well, how I. That's another interesting thing too, right? Like we think, like everybody's going to Google stuff, right? You're like, oh, I want to get myself a new monitor. Like, what's the best monitor for under such and such a? If you're, I have two monitors that I use <laughs> almost exclusively for chat. Yeah. I've got chat over here, big, long one. So it's, for, so it's, it's in uh, the vertical mode. Uh, and, and over here, I've got uh, OBS and chat again, because I'm, I'm like, I'm going to check my eyebrows and my hair and look at chat at the same time. I don't need, I could, that could be like eight frames a second and I would still be fine. That could okay. be the crappiest monitor I've a TV. ever had. And it, exactly. You don't even need a monitor for the other ones that are just holding exactly browsers. for my but downstairs okay. rig, which is not going to be gaming. Yeah. Uh, I have an 11 year old TV, an yeah. 11 year old LCD TV that I wouldn't, I would sell for 20 bucks. Maybe there's so many, like if you really need an attachment and it comes with it, like you can get like a converter or there are, PCs still allow those different types of plugins, Yeah, Use a TV. And then just make sure whatever you're playing on is at what you feel comfortable with. Absolutely. Or even just Maya. if you have a laptop or a tablet and you right. have chat. Or on phone. Chat. Yeah. Or your phone. Yeah. You could just have chat scrolling on another 
screen that doesn't have to be connected to a PC. Yep. You don't need two or three monitors if you have the game. I mean, two is helpful for OBS in the game, yeah. uh, but you can have chat on a completely separate device. I mean, I know, sure, I know a few but... people who still stream on, on, on one monitor. Um, you know, like once you, once you, you know, elevate your, your setup, uh, you should definitely be getting two because it eases yeah. so many burdens and you can do that on a budget, but you do not have to have an, an 80 monitor setup to appear to be a professional streamer. So I don't my first, I need these fancy <laughs> monitors. <laughs> yeah, I have three, but like <laughs> my first setup was I had like this really old is my first ever, uh, computer and my computer monitor. Like it was literally like this like square, it was a square and it was like thick as a brick. Like it was so ghetto. And I, I, uh, I actually use my mom's. <laughs> same. I use my mom's uh, old iPad that she had uh, that she wasn't using. I used that for chat for a long time uh, on this like tiny, tiny little desk. So like it didn't cost me anything because I just had stuff like that. You know, my parents had that I just took from them. Um, yep. And then yeah, for desk like same thing like a cheap like Office Depot desk that I had since like high school. It was like. The tiniest thing, like I, I couldn't even fit a second monitor on my desk at the time, uh, and now I use a really lavish giant sandy desk <laughs> that you don't want to get on the budget. Yeah, cool. I wish I could do the standing desk thing. I'm just so lazy. If I'm being honest, because I would have a standing my... desk and still sit. Yeah, <laughs> I'd right? be like, it's up there, and I'd be like, uh, I do mostly ah. still sit. <laughs> it does come in handy <laughs> yeah. for like. <laughs> Games are going VR great, streams. <laughs> See, if I was playing like a console game, I think I would be comfortable with standing just because I could just step back a little bit. But if I'm yeah, like, I don't know. I would have to try it. That's gonna be an adventure. I'm gonna go. I on. do. I do play with a controller a lot. Um, and I would be totally into. I would just be like bouncing back and forth. You know, like you guys have seen me at conventions. Like I'm. I, I, I don't like to stand around a lot. I, I do a lot of bouncing. I totally do something like that. So with even with a standing desk, Loco, what do you recommend? In regards to that, do you recommend just having it higher up and putting it on a desk on stuff? If you can't get a standing desk, like, <laughs> this is yeah, a pile of books. Uh, just, just <laughs> make a desk on top of your desk and just like yes. plop it Double on. Double desk, ultra desk. <laughs> um, <laughs> desk. <laughs> I went right for like the one that just goes up by itself. Uh, it the like. It's not going to be like a uh, not good budget alternative. Um, I think I there are some, there mm -hmm. are some that like you can put on top and then that itself lifts and not like the whole desk. But I feel like I have like my PC and my Xbox, and my PlayStation, and my Switch, and three monitors on my desk. Like I, I don't know if there would be one that could support lifting everything sure. up or something. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's it's a, it's more of a professional streamer upgrade than like. Get finding a cheap way around it. Go to the local library and get some books. <laughs> <laughs> Rent your Thanks. desk elevator. Oh, that reminds me. We were talking about console games and stuff. Renting your games. Yeah, we mentioned that before the stream. Oh my god. Oh, oh what? No, we didn't. I've never heard this. I'm Tell sorry. Me. We oh just my god. Oh, heard great of this. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Please tell us. Oh my gosh, my chat. Who's talking about that? You're probably like, I've heard this so many times. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so I I went pretty big into Destiny um to even to go as far as like being a part of the big Guardian Con charity. Yes. Director sort of uh directory sort of started and it's just been so cool. Um, but that game came out in 2014 back when the same um, year that Elder Scrolls Online came out, which was the game that took away my World of Warcraft addiction. Mm -hmm. yes, I know if you're in the chat and you played WoW, it happened. I broke Proud it, but I played another MMO and then Destiny came out. So it was basically I traded World of Warcraft mm -hmm. for a shooter MMO and then just like an Elder Scrolls for Universe MMO. It's fine. <laughs> and But I was, oh my God, you guys, when I say like I had like negative money in my account so I was like, I got this $5 bill um, and I <laughs> rented at Redbox um, the first Destiny one on the 360. <laughs> I had the, that it was, uh, it was very ugly, but 
I got to play it at launch, which was very important to me on my console. And I rented it for, for a weekend. handful of bucks. I rented it on that weekend because I was streaming Elder Scrolls online, but I was playing Destiny off stream because I didn't know how to stream. I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to capture a uh, console. Um, yeah, yeah. And then I did eventually get the Aver Media ex like external. They don't even make it anymore because it's so terrible. Oof. Yep. Um, I but I used to those. have the, yeah, the, the audio jack. So I would have earbuds and my headset on. Um, <laughs> you just work with what you got, guys. <laughs> There's so many better alternatives now, but um, you just got to make it work. If you are anticipating a game and it's for rent and you want to play it when it goes live, like do it. Go rent yep. that stuff. And yeah. library, I know <laughs> I know we were joking about it for like your desks, but like libraries do rent games as well. Yes. And for zero dollars, I think. Yeah, free. Get a That's library the... card, rent your game. Absolutely. Games. I did not know that libraries had games. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Libraries oh, have yeah. movies, TV shows without a subscription. You just have to get there and get back. CD. Um, it's basically yeah. like Blockbuster, but like library mode. And, and publicly funded. You're already paying your taxes for this. Go take advantage. You basically have a subscription to the place. You could also even if you're if you already have like a stream, you could even make it a thing. Like if you could even make it like I'm going to go to the library to go get the game, I guys. Like, that's a great like, idea. Vote on the game that I go and rent. Yeah, like yeah, like that's I'm going to go idea. play. I'm going to go get the new Fallout game in the library. And you can do that. <laughs> oh dang! TMC. Yes, that's a great idea. That's a great because see then this is and so the, I mean that's another thing too, right? Is like, I mean, how many of us have picked up a game, streamed it, and then realized that it's not good for the stream, and then you're out that money? You see, like, you know, you're limited oh, on how much you can time. refund. Well, yeah. at least with like with like Steam, if you really, really hate the game, you can return it and get your within two back. hours of gameplay. Yeah. So like I'm gonna be sitting there for a 12-hour stream sure. and then go. I shouldn't, and then I'm out sixty bucks. And there's, you know, what do you, what can you do? If you're renting it from Redbox, if you're going to the to the library or whatever, and you can make it thematic, you can even have like, uh, you know, some kind of a if you if you got a green screen, you know, some kind of a theme with, you know, just a photo of the Redbox. Just 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 get crappy with it. Just make it comical and just weird. You know, get funky get creative and actually have that on your green screen. Be like, hey, I'm going out to the and do something stupid where you're like. <laughs> go and, and then you and then you're renting it like right there on you know and then you play it on stream uh you can do a whole thematic thing with it and that would also be a reason why you only stream it for three days or however long you can you can rent them you could do a whole thing with with a lot of that stuff with creativity more than with money yeah um another thing that i want to touch on is uh like making your stream graphics and stuff there are free mm. resources and free tools that you can use for your graphics like uh gimp is basically a free completely free version mm -hmm. of photoshop there are a ton of tutorials online uh you can learn pick up some things yourself and oh, you know, i wish save i had yourself the thing. Money. there is a guy who actually makes he he just makes them and they're free they're templates like buttons and templates yeah overlays and all Nerd that or die like, has like a, a panel maker and, and mm -hmm. a bunch of free graphics um like they ha yeah you can like make custom panels with their Don't, tool i would i would recommend to not stress yourself out with that stuff um less is so much more oh and, yes um just if you're worried about like oh i need a commission art for my no just only when you can really afford to. only when you can afford to as a luxury as an a plus an extension like absolutely like you don't need that. You're already amazing the way you are. You don't need these crazy graphics and spend all your money that you could be putting into your stream. And, and artists totally. do not expect artists to work for free or for exposure. Oh, God, God, yes. No, please. They deserve the money that you might not be able to pay. So just, just. That's a good quote right there. Yeah. So I have so many amazing point. artists that have been treated terribly. So just, if you can't afford it right now, get creative. If you yeah. have a friend, maybe trade like something in return and work on something sure. together. You never sure. know. It's, it's about like Twitch is about and streaming is about community and working together with your fellow streamers. If you see something you like from someone and they're like, oh, I made it. Like you could ask like, how did you make it? Or like, 
do you have any tips? Or like, I really like that font. What's that font? Like you can ask those things. You can ask questions. It's insane yeah. how many questions you can ask. You can ask everything. Yeah. You know, I think you can Honestly. get really creative with your graphics and stuff too, doing stuff like what just occurred to me is like, how would I do it if I had to start over again with zero bucks? I would get dirt and spell out my name in a street and take a picture. The next day, I would do it with grass clippings. The next day, I would do it with upside down pieces of mail. The yeah. next day, I would write it on a burnt sheet of paper. The next, you know, and if you change it up with frequency and all you have to do is get a little creative with it, zero dollars. You can do things I, I've not seen anybody do that. Do having like a rot rotating or, or a changing visual element that you never know what to expect. It's different every day. You can even well, make, get creative with it, like having a contest in your stream. Like, hey, what can you guys do with my name? Boom! Well, there you, you also, go. You, the graphics. you also get you also get an emote. So maybe you spent fifty bucks on an emote. Well, I literally put I made my own <laughs> actually, and I just used my emotes in my info section, and it's awesome. Yeah, oh, totally. Extremely free. <laughs> I watched, uh, I actually watched streams of people Photoshopping like commissions. Perfect. And then I had a stream of them Photoshopping on one monitor and Photoshop that I downloaded <laughs> on my monitor and then was like, okay, so how are they dragging and draw? Oh, okay, that's how they do it. And I was you, like- YouTube yeah, is just Bob thing. Ross, that bad boy. <laughs> yeah, Pain it was along. like between Twitch and between YouTube, I learned- about layers and hue saturation and all this kind of stuff and i made all my panels myself i did commission an artist for like some of my uh splash screens but the rest of it i figured out myself i did it myself i learned it was free to learn i mean when i was in college i went to school for computer animation so basically art and just like graphics and things like that um what they told me to do was like google and <laughs> thanks and school and like, YouTube, and like YouTube tutorials. So I became very good at finding tutorials. So yeah, yeah. if you can't find it for whatever the reason, you can always ask a streamer that even you, that even like Loco and Hunter, you can ask them like, hey, I'm having a really hard time finding a tutorial on like how to light your stream. Can you help me? And I'm sure that they'd be like, oh my God, yeah. Here's the link. Here's the tutorial. These are the ones that I liked. Like. There's, you just need to ask. Just ask. Quick note, ask me on stream, don't DM me. Yeah, I will sure. spend an hour talking about it on stream. Uh, I cannot yeah. take five minutes off stream to, to reply to a DM. So DMs are hard because they're so busy, but like even just tweeting. Straight out, up. Yeah. I mean, we're on Twitter feels, a lot. Like, and, yeah. yeah, and you never know if someone else will see it. Like maybe we're streaming and Absolutely. we don't see it. But then like someone we know that knows how we did what we did. It's that's like, oh, yeah, like they did it on stream too, where it's like yeah. now everybody can hear the explanation and continue to ask follow-up questions. And that and then and, it, and, and uh yeah, I heard of this place, uh Twitch TV slash streamer square, where you can also ask questions <laughs> about very topical subjects as they come up uh every uh Monday at uh, two PM Pacific and even get your, wow. your stream. I've never heard of this before. On Tuesdays. <laughs> it's yeah, um, it's really interesting. It's a, it's not uh it's very free, I think, too. Should people follow? I think they should follow. It's an easy way to see when it goes live, yeah. It's I very think, easy. Think they want to follow button. You could learn so many things. <laughs> we also have a, a Discord, too. So, like, if, yes, we, <laughs> like, if we can't answer your question, someone's going to find answers to your question. So It is a free, big community of people who want to learn resource. and also have information to share. Every single person who has a question to ask has something to share too. Has a question that could, that they can answer. Um, we I did see one question about uh chairs, and I want to the reason I really want to talk about this for a minute, real quick, is like crap. We're almost out of time. Gaming chairs, you see them everywhere. I'm a hypocrite for using one, but I, I do think they're really overpriced and overrated. They're not hey, ergonomically I'm the one friendly. On the panel that doesn't. Um, I, really, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I think that like you can get a nice office chair if you're looking to spend that kind of money, but yeah. you don't even need you don't like this isn't gonna that. like the cure to making you a professional streamer. So like yes. don't need Honestly, a gaming chair. What you really need to focus on is um just a quality place to sit. Honestly. Yes. You wanna take care of your body. If you, you don't you don't wanna like get back pain or sore or anything like that, you can get creative. There are things online, there are discounts online, Black Friday's mm -hmm. coming. 
Staples is a great place. Lazy Boy actually sells out of Staples. So if you're looking for like a good quality chair that will work for now, you can do that. There's so many options. I have, I mean, a, I, sorry, I have a chronic pain condition. So yeah. I, I find I do need a supportive chair. And so for me, this is great. Uh, before though, I used uh, the Ikea Marcus chair, which is a high back. It's got arms. It's, it looks nice, but also I found it to be really supportive and good. And that is like, a pretty common chair that I see people using uh, on a cheap, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> on like a, a more inexpensive, uh, but looks good and is supportive chair. So yeah. And if you're only streaming part time where you're only sitting down for like, you know, three hours a day, like you don't need to oh go God, right for I that nice that. upgrade. Absolutely. Right. True. Like, so start with what you have if you're on a budget, like, and you're only there for a short amount of time. Go get your dining table chair. I used yeah. the metal chair. Yeah. yeah. I when literally I was, used my chair from the kitchen. When yeah. I was painting for six years, I had a wooden chair. I didn't even use a pillow. Yeah. Uh, I didn't yep, sit in it all the time. Same. <laughs> what? Same. Yeah. yeah. And, and it was surprisingly comfortable. Um, I have So I have chronic neck pain. And the way that uh, headrests work is kind of interesting. I think Sometimes I really like them when my uh, when it's flaring up really hard, but the rest of the time, like being able to go all the way back, like and make it make this stretching it out, it's like really interesting. You got to know your body and work with something that works there. But if you're not going to be sitting down in the chair for twelve hours a day, you don't necessarily need all the right. comfort, maximum max, just maxing that stuff out for a billion dollars. Also, remember to stretch, everybody. Uh -huh. I know. <laughs> stretch. Take off remember your head. To hydrate. I usually like this. Take off my headset. And use your hand, <laughs> like pull and move. And it's free. Up. It's free. It's, it's free. free. Streaming on a budget. Remember to stretch. Yeah. Or else <laughs> and then you're honestly you save yourself alert. some medical bills right there. Yeah. Stretch your legs, man. I'm in Canada. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, that's fair. Uh, <laughs> damn. Damn. All right. So that's going to do it for us today, guys. Let's do some shout outs. What Kate, a wonderful show. Mav, you guys are lovely. I love thank your faces. You so much. And thank you everyone in the chat for supporting Streamer Square and allowing me yeah. to come on this podcast. I literally I hope we saved you guys a, quite a few them. bucks. I do just want to point out that the Sacramento Public Library has an account and was in chat when we were talking about <laughs> renting games from your public library and they were super stoked on it. What? Um, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Anyways, oh, that's awesome. God. Um, Mav, where can we find you on social medias? What are you up to? <laughs> I'm literally the Mav show everywhere. The Mav, Mav, Mavicorn, the Mav show. Um, I stream twice a day, usually uh, by 11 a.m. Pacific time. And in the evenings, I do Sunday, Monday, a podcast where I just hang out and just talk to a streamer and really get to know everything about them and just like how they wake up. What do they drink? How do you stream? Everything. I'm just very annoying and very obsessed with my streamer friends so that's what we do there um and then i do a lot of just dance in the evenings actually we have a dance party just because there's like the twitch lumia light show thing that i like to do and every time there's a sub it pops up and rainbow magic that's cool it's just a party so that's where i do awesome kate hi uh, <laughs> my name is kate stark not hate Stark. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, the font, the font like. is not it's cooperating. The font. But you know what? Maybe I should rebrand. Um, <laughs> my name is Kate Stark. Uh, it's Kate on Twitch. Super easy to remember. And Kate Stark on Twitter. Um, I'm very active on all of those places. Also, Instagram, Kate Stark TV. But we, uh, I stream like five or six or seven days a week. Um, <laughs> five to nine days a week. Five eh? to nine days a week. Um, I stream generally in the evenings. And like I said, we've got like a super like good variety of stuff going on. And into December, we're going to be doing more creative streams with baking and like tree so decorating. Good. Yes. Hanging out and all that kind so of stuff. I, have oh, a, I want to decorate ornaments. I have a really cozy vibe to my stream and I just want everyone to come in and feel themselves and feel welcome to feel like we're just a big group of friends because we are. Uh, but I play shooters. I play Stardew Valley. I play kind of whatever comes my the way. Mm -hmm. And then also I decorate cakes. Uh, so just come <laughs> and hang out with us. You're, you're all real great. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you so thank much. Thank you guys. Hunter? D um... Hunter? 
I I only know the wasteland right now. I I I'm streaming nine days a week for generally twelve hours twelve hours a day. <laughs> Anytime I, took, like, I wake up, you've already started streaming. I know. And by the time <laughs> I, I go to bed, you're still streaming. <laughs> people people have come in and raided me like five hours into the stream, and then like. 10 hours into the stream, they're like, whoa, yeah. just, good morning. I'm like, hey, uh, you can find me over at twitch.tv slash the Hunter Wild. Non-stop Fallout 76 playthroughs. I'm level 63 or something. I probably hit 70 today. Oh uh, it's it's kind of disgusting, but I can't stop with that game. It's it's phenomenal. It's a variety stream, though, uh, other than when we do big launch events like this. It's, then I only know that one game. You can find me on Twitter at... Uh, Twitter.com slash the Hunter Wild TV. It's got the TV at the end because sometimes I show up on people's TVs, I guess. Monitors or TVs too on a budget. Um on a budget. And then I'm and I'm here every every Monday. Uh except for those other Mondays. But every Monday here doing 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 the uh the stream scene, which is a, a, a phenomenal joy, especially when we have such delightful and brilliant guests sharing their expertise like today. Ah, ah. Loco, who are you? What about you, Loco? Who are you? <laughs> Hi, I'm Loco. Um, I am also a variety streamer. And uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash loco, twitter.com slash loco2525. I am currently finishing up Red Dead, playing Fallout, mm. checking out Battlefield, also started Magic the Gathering all in the, within a week. So it's mm. it's it's been fun. That's um, a bit. I'm, I, I play everything. Like, I'm just all over the place. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, before you guys leave, we actually have another show right after this, guys. Yes. Uh, yeah, so Your Brand, Your Business is on literally the second we end the stream. The next show comes up. Uh, it's going to be Galen and Ernest talking about uh, year-end planning. So if you ever want more information about the business side of streaming from experts that know learning. more things about running a business than I do, uh, or that any of us do probably, uh definitely stay tuned for that show that's gonna literally be right after this guys uh so stay tuned uh but thank you guys for being here we will be back next week um i don't know if we've selected the topic yet so we can't tease you guys i don't think we I had think something there was we something. have it we just don't know what it is that's good we're yeah. prepared for this um we, we do have twitter. a show next week <laughs> we do have a show yes, next week on twitter there is one it's gonna be here at the same time same place so we'll see you guys soon don't go anywhere the next show will start right right after this thank you guys for tuning into the stream scene we'll see you guys next week bye bye